the people whose spirit has not been reactivated and are found in the midst of any congregation, they are a danger. Okay, there are those who, whose spirits have not been reactivated because they, they are okay like that. They don't want mambo ya kiroo sana usitaki. Mambo hii ya kuomba kwa ruga zingine na kuongea vitu ambazo kuna kamu ya ndawazimu. You know, they, they look at foolishness. And of course, Paul said that, said that things of the spirit are ever foolishness to anybody who is perishing.
is that the Lord will supply all your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Lift up your faith. Lift up your faith to the Lord. We are serving the God who is able. He can meet you right now at the point of your need. He will supply your needs, not according to your knowledge, but according to his riches in glory. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Tell Jesus, this is where I need your intervention. This is what is in my heart. Father, according to your will, meet my needs. Lift up your need before the Lord. He is faithful and he is just. He will supply your needs this morning. We thank you, Father, that even as we are singing the song of Jacob, we are singing the song of Jacob, when he told the angel that I don't want to let you go until you bless me. We thank you because your presence is here with us. We worship you because you have come down to meet with the needs of your people. Father, I lift up those that are not feeling well. I pray for the sick, O oh God. May you touch them with your healing hand, my Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for those that are trusting you for finances. Father, may you open doors because you are here to bless. May you bless them, Lord. Those that are trusting you for jobs, Father, meet them at that point. Those that are having emotional pains, Lord, I pray that you would meet those emotional pains. Whatever has caused that mesh, that those pains, deal with it, my God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, for those are all those ones having issues in their families, oh God. My father, issues between husbands and wives. Oh God, my Lord, may you intervene and let there be peace in those families. Let there be love in those families. Let there be forgiveness in that, those families. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I lift those that are trusting you for the salvation of their loved ones. Oh God, answer that prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, my Lord. Those that are trusting you for their businesses. Oh God, my Father, intervene in those situations. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray that you who is a discerner of men's hearts, you discern the thoughts of men. Lord, my God, our plea to you this morning is answer us as we call. Hear our prayer. As we started by singing that our hearts are waiting on you, our souls are waiting on you, O oh, Father in heaven. May you be found by every soul that has come trusting in you this morning. Attend to all the needs. I want to pray against the spirit of oppression in the name of Jesus. Every demon spirit of hell that has been sent to magnify the problems in the brethren's lives. I cancel their activities this morning. You spirits of hell, you demons of hell, you spirits behind the struggles that my brethren are going through, I address you in the name of Jesus. May you be subject to the power of the Lord and we cast you out. We render you powerless. We bind your powers in the name of Jesus. Father, and I release the ministry of the Holy Spirit to minister to each one of us. We love you, we bless you, and we honor you. We appreciate, Lord, that you have heard our prayer. Can we lift up a hand clap to the Lord? And thank him by faith. Thank him by faith. Because he has heard your prayers and he has answered them. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord.
Welcome to what I've been teaching, and as usual, uh, the word of God is alive. And anything that is living, it can move, it can grow, it can take one turn to another, and all that. The difference between us and non-living things is that the word of God uh, is alive. And it's, the Bible says it is sharper than two-edged swords and it is able even to divide between the spirit and the soul and do deeper things that sometimes our minds cannot comprehend. And so I have been dealing with um, a teaching from the book of Jude and even so I cannot say that you can ever exhaust because this word evolves. When I wake up in the morning coming to teach from the book of Jude, I get another 50 verses. Then I'm like, oh God, where now again? Because it's a sure sign that this word is alive. And it will become fresh every morning it comes up. So my main verse in Jude uh, was verse 3 that has branched and continued to branch until I will not even finish the branches, but I thank God for what I'll be able to accomplish today. And so I want to pass on the little that the Lord has given me so that we share with one another. So I was able to cover some content uh, which I cannot be able to go through right now, uh, what I, I was able to share in the WhatsApp. But remember, the theme of Jude is found in verse 3. Dear friends, Although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write and exhort you to contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once and for all. Contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints once and for all. I dwelt around that uh, last Sunday, take me to verse 19. Verse 19. Uh, verse 19 is like a, a portion of what has been discussed like from verse 4 all the way to verse 18. And when I got to verse 19, I got stuck on only one word there called natural. These people create divisions and are, nat and are merely natural, not having the spirit. Those two words, or those, that sentence, being natural and not having the spirit, I felt to teach uh, over those two because to majority uh, of the brethren, I say majority because I've been around for many years, and uh, there are some terminologies I attest to that with the time they have like disappeared from our our, our Christian language, our Christian vocabulary. And um, when they disappear, they disappear with a lot of content. And uh, I feel it is the right time. These terminologies with understanding are brought back to each one of us because depending on the time you gave your life to Christ, then some of these words might be completely new to you. Um, my version does not use the word natural. They say these are essential persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. Now, that verse, as I've said, uh, is a culmination of what started from verse 4. And Jude is explaining how to contend or how to defend the faith that was passed on to us. Now, the faith that was passed down to us, we were able to answer last week. Who did the passing? It is the apostles. From the time of the apostles, when the church began, there was a particular faith that was passed on. But before the dispensation of the apostles, the Lord quickened those the same early apostles to put a caution or a warning because prophetically God showed them that that faith would be endangered down the history. 
down the line, that faith will undergo a lot of attacks and it can actually, a possibility of disappearing. Because you remember even Jesus himself in the book of Luke chapter 6, verse, six, verse chapter 18, verse 6, he was saying, nevertheless, when the Son of Man returns, we he find faith on the earth. Of course, from the original writers or language, they say it was a, a, a question that was self-answered that actually there would be no faith. When the Son of Man returns, he will not find faith. Why? Because through the mouths of the, the pillars of the early church, God decided to send a warning. He sent a warning using Peter. He sent a warning using uh, Paul. He sent a comprehensive warning using John in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3, where seven letters were written. And to most of the letters, now that's, and remember, it is not John. You know, the, the beauty about the book of Revelation is that it was not written by a human being. It was directly passed on. All John was told, just put it on paper, eh, on ink and paper. He never wrote anything. As it were, John was put before a television, a big screen. And a movie of all the last days was played before him. And he was told to document everything the way you are seeing it. So if he saw a horse, he wrote around the horse. If he saw a, a, a black horse, he wrote a black horse. Literally what he saw, he was read. So it was not John's imagination or even he was not allowed to reason out and put his emotions or his ideas, that is the only letter in the Bible that was downloaded from heaven. The book of Revelation is a downloaded book. And God decides that because uh, after these apostles are gone, there's going to be a mix-up. He saw these attacks over the faith. Then he said, let me roll the other part of my calendar so that it remains on earth documented. So the book of Revelation, which God one day will give me time to go through it and maybe give a key, key, key information about that, is among the, the, the letters or the books that are written by Christ himself. Really, it's not even Christ. It was written by God. God passed it on to, to, to Jesus. Jesus passed it on to an angel. An angel passed it on to John. And John passed it on to the church. And not the church of his days. He passed it on to the church up to eternity. So, these men of God, through the, 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 the Holy Spirit, were able prophetically to see even our days. And they were able to raise an alarm and say, down the line, this faith will be attacked. And so Jude was only given one task. And he was told, tell them those who will be on earth at whatever time of history to defend this faith. And it is a particular faith. It is not every other faith. Type. Last week I was able to expound on that. There are other faiths. It's not even the Old Testament faith. The Old Testament faith was totally different from the faith that the apostles passed on to the church. You see, there's nothing like being born again in the Old Testament. In fact, in the Old Testament, they only talk about the body and the soul. You don't hear the mention of the spirit. In the Old Testament, the spirit of a man, it's not there. Because it is Jesus who came to quicken or to bring back to life the spirit of a man that died in the Garden of Eden. That deactivated the spirit that up to today dwells in human beings who are not born again. 
they have a deactivated spirit. A deactivated spirit is a spirit that cannot connect with God. It can't hear God. It cannot appreciate anything about God. It is never moved when anything of God is, is, is being mentioned. Then we know that is a deactivated spirit. So that's what I was teaching last week about a deactivated spirit that leaves a man to work using the body and the senses, the natural senses. And Paul raised a flag, they call it a red flag, in the book of Romans, as we read last week, chapter 8, verse 5 onwards. And he said, those who use common sense can never please God. If I can paraphrase it. If you are a person who uses human wisdom, human understanding, common sense, you go by your instinct. Paul said, these are enemies of God. And my burden comes here that depending on when one got saved, that distinction has not been made clear. And as a result, right now we have congregations that are mainly composed of people who use five senses, who use common sense in solving all the problems they have. They want to use their own invention of technology. They want to use their own uh, you know, psychology to sort out. You know, people have gone and even studied psychology. Uh, they, have, they have done counseling. They are trying to find a solution. If you read through all the psychology that is written down, nothing is mentioned about the spirit of a man. They will tell you about the mind. They will tell you about your emotions. They will tell you about your feelings and something like that, and that puts an end to a whole course. Somebody goes for three years to read about psychology. And all it will tell you, it's about your normal human body and the human soul. And Paul was able to show us that a man upon creation has got three parts. He has a body, he has a soul, and he has a spirit. The spirit part of a man he is the main focus of the coming of Jesus Christ on earth. And that is why he told the condemners that unless the spirit man in you has been activated, you will not go into the kingdom of God. I am paraphrasing because being born again means your spirit man being activated. And how is it activated? By realizing that you actually are part of that Adamic sin and you take your sins to the Lord according to 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And once sin and the power there is of sin because there is sin and there is the power of sin. Those are two. You no, know, Paul was calling them laws, the laws of sin. There is the sin that you have committed, but there is a power that activates you to sin. Once that power is lifted, once the sin is removed and the power behind the sin is removed, then your spirit man is reactivated. So now you are born again. Possibly you got born again and you didn't even understand the chemistry of what happened. And you are just moving by masses. To you, who are born again is to, be, to become a member of a congregation. No. To be born again is to have the spirit part of you activated. Because it was dead. Praise the Lord. You know, every statement I, 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 I utter, there is a scripture for it, but uh, time does not allow me. Can I show you that you are a human being moving, not born again, is a dead person? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and the sins. Just, just go back there. 
and you were dead in trespasses. Anybody who is under the power of sin is a dead person as far as God is concerned because the death he declared to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is still active. It's still active in the life of this person. Go to verse 2. In which you previously walked according to this worldly age. According, you know the word is previously because Paul is talking to born again believers. Those who are no longer dead. Who have been become alive. Now these are the basics of Christianity. Possibly nobody explained to you the day you got born again. What, what metamorphosis were you to undergo? What change? What happened to you as an or should have happened? So you were just told, give your life to the Lord Jesus. You raised your hand up and you said a sinner's prayer. And then from there you were told, continue saying, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And you continued like that without proper understanding. What really happened in the supernatural that brings out a new man or a new woman in you? Because Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All the things are past, and behold, all things become new. You can cast that scripture. There is a transformation. If it didn't take place, that's why we must go back to the basics and keep checking. If you will not cast. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. There is a reaction. There is an activation. I think the right word is just an activation. You activate. Now, because we have technology these days, it becomes easier for us to preach using the, the, the language of technology. Because when you, are, you, you have a problem with your, 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 your provider, eh? your network provider, uh, you have to call them to, for, you, for them to reactivate your line. Reactivation. Now, many years back we could not use that terminology because many people could not understand. But now you understand that there is a reactivation. There was a deactivation in the Garden of Eden. Now, when Jesus came, he came and initiated a process of a reactivation such that a born again Christian is somebody who is so conscious of God. You are, the presence of God is so alive in you. You have an open communication one more time because Jesus now comes and says, you are not able to get to my father unless you walk through me. So this is the faith that was written about by the early apostles. And the Jude comes and says, be aware that this information is not disappeared from your midst. Be aware that the people who are born again actually understand what has happened to them. The power of sin has been lifted. Therefore, you have the ability to do the good that God purposed you to do from the foundation of the world. Our elder was teaching us like that in the morning. There is a purpose and a plan that God has for you. But this can only be achieved if your spirit part of you is the, I mean, reactivated. So that now your soul, your spirit, and your body are all alert about God. And can connect and they can relate to God. Praise the Lord. So Jude was told, write to them and tell them. Jude's letter is for eternity. It was not even written to a small congregation. Defend, ensure, and that's what we are, we are, that has been committed to us in the leadership. Ensure that the faith remains. And the faith is not a, a supernatural something you, you, you just go and switch on and off. No. The faith of our transformation, that understanding does not disappear from your midst. Why? Acts 20, 28. A 
Okay, this is what Paul was writing. Be on guard for yourselves. Those are the leaders. He was addressing the elders. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock. Now, I'm talking about you. I have to be on guard. Whom the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. So we are just appointed overseers. And that's why we are under obligation to make sure that we are following those instructions. Let's move on. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Now, the word I'm picking there is among you. Do you know that the danger to your faith does not come from a, a, a super something, you know, mysterious being out there? It is because he knew, and Jude elaborated, that the people whose spirit has not been reactivated and are found in the midst of any congregation, they are a danger. Okay, there are those who, uh, whose spirits have not been reactivated because they, they are okay like that. They don't want mambo ya kiroo sana usitaki. Mambo hii ya kuomba kwa ruga zingine na kuongea vitu ambazo unakamu enda wazimu. You know, they, they look at foolishness. And of course, Paul said that, said that things of the spirit are ever foolishness to anybody who is perishing. So he's saying that when I go, there will be people among you, not from outside, among you. Oh my God, I hope they are not among us. But we must use the letter of Jude to ensure that they are not here. They, and they will come among you, not sparing the flock. Get to the next one. And the men from among yourselves will rise up with the deviant doctrines to lure the disciples and to following them. I dwelt on that point last week because that is what has multiplied down the line. That is why at this point in time, as the leadership, we must put up a, a pause and check again amongst the sheep. Who do we have amongst the sheep? There are some whose spirits have not been deactivated innocently because possibly they, they, have, they lack the teachings. And for such, we are here and that's why this preaching is being, uh, I'm doing it today. But there are others who with hardened hearts, they block out. You know, Jude said, those people are essential. They are so natural and they don't want anything to do with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit does not make sense. So, mi minataka tuwa kuwa mtu mzuri. Nikuje tu kwa kanisa, niyombe tu pole pole, ni malize ibada yangu ni tuwe sadaka. Ii mambo ingine ya kukati, muna fanya vitu zingine ya siyelewi, ah ah, leave me alone. Now, Judy was saying, this kind of an attitude, people with this kind of an attitude, they are the wrong people to be in our midst, and then that prompted me to teach right from the word of God that there is a person whose spirit is activated and sensitive to God and there's another one who has no sensitivity towards God. Terminologies that are common, you commonly used in the Bible are called carnal, no, okay, I, I brought up three groups. Not, there are not those totally who are not born again. There are those who are born again but have resisted the Holy Spirit. Those are carnal Christians. And Paul explained it in the book of Romans chapter 6. I am almost repeating my message. Romans chapter 6, chapter 8 from verse 5. So it's a deep going to the basics. Okay, for those whose lives are according to the flesh, think about the things of the flesh, but, not, but those whose lives are according to the spirit about the things of the spirit. Let's go on. 
It's a self-explanatory. For the mindset of the flesh is death. But a mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Let's move on. For the mindset of the flesh is hostile to God. Because it does not submit itself to God's law. For it is unable to do it. You cannot. You resist the work of the Holy Spirit. That scripture will judge you. You cannot please God. Let's go. Those whose lives are in the flesh are unable to please God. And this appeal is to the anybody who is not filled with the Holy Spirit. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Now, that continues because he's now addressing the brethren. But I was bringing out that point that the carnal, there is a carnal Christian who got born again, but never invited the Holy Spirit. Now, minus the Holy Spirit, that man, spirit man who was activated or reactivated in you, becomes subject to the body man without the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. You can't please God because the natural spirit of a man, even if it is reactivated, it doesn't have the capacity to sustain a standard that God has set that enables this person to do things that are pleasing to the Lord. You always succumb to the desires of the flesh. If you go to the book of Galatians chapter 5, Paul explained and said, the work of the flesh, go, let's go there. Galatians chapter 5 verse 18. Let's go back. Verse 17, let's go back a bit. Yes, for the flesh desires what is against the spirit. Very key. Very key. And the spirit desires what is against the flesh. Those two are enemies. The flesh and the spirit. Now you hear many Christians quoting and saying, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And they say, full stop. Thank you, God. This, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. So I have succumbed <laughs> to the flesh. Yes. Paul said, Where, how does these things arise among you? This is the key. These two are against each other. Now, my point is, the Holy Spirit comes to intercept or to intervene in this battle. When your spirit is willing, the Holy Spirit energizes it. Then you do what the Holy Spirit is desiring to do. But when you are willing and there is no presence of the Holy Spirit, you will always say, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So to fornicate is no more. To lie is no more. To, to steal is kawaida. Do you know you are still saying the flesh is weak? <laughs> it is not weak. It is actually stronger than the spirit man. Because he's the one that is leading. Those who are led by the flesh. That's what we have read in the book of Romans. If, you know, Tamaha Zamwili, they are the ones that you succumb to. Then go to, the, go to the book of Jude and realize that you are among the dangers in the body of Jesus Christ. You are actually a danger. So you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are a dangerous man or a dangerous woman. These are the ones who easily cause divisions. That's what Judah said. They easily cause divisions. Moshene, I will go talk to this one like this. And go talk to this one like this. And those things found in the church today, they are there. Even after this, please, may the Spirit of the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> hmm? If after this you have a story you are waiting to tell that person against another one, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. 
Because the spirit of the Lord is not a division causing spirit. The spirit of the Lord will tell you, you are part of the solution, you're not part of the problem. Bring a solution between these two people who have a problem. Don't be part of the problem by, do you know what so and so said? Especially the anointing found in women. Oh my God. Thank God, God never gave many, many words. Hata kianza kuongea tu maneno inaisha. Lakini us, women, oh, 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 oh. Na inakuanga tamu. He. Chufi kiwe kwa kidogo. Story sasa inaenda. Utapata it is seven o'clock and the mother has not gone to cook at home. Because iyo, iyo, iyo story ilikuwa mzuri. Muna chambua from this angle. Muna pendua, muna chambua from the other angle. Muna look at the face. As I am preaching, there is somebody who is saying she, she's looking at me with bad eyes. Those eyes. Those eyes. You are waiting to go and tell them, Sister Njeru, why was she preaching about me? Works of the flesh. I am here under anointing. And appointed. Not by a human being. By God himself. Praise the Lord. To put this information in black and white, clear. You had something happened to so and so. Is it your responsibility to spread that to, some, to many other people? And is your spreading going to help or to worsen the situation? Hmm? That is that kind of anointing. But the spirit of the Lord in you will tell you, instead of going to say somebody, to tell to somebody, let me go and pray for my sister. And when God gives you courage, you can go and fellowship using the word of God and you will help your sister. Praise the Lord. So these people, so you have understood the flesh and the spirit are against each other and don't always justify yourself because God will not justify you. Because you justified yourself. I was not able to do this because the, the flesh was, I, I mean, I was weak. The spirit was willing. But the flesh, I was not able to resist. Mark those words of the apostles. And that's what Jude was saying. The words, remember what the, the apostles told you. I am within scripture. Hmm? I'm trying to get that scripture, but I want to summarize, uh, give a summary to this teaching. Uh, now, to those who are born again, those who are led by the Spirit of God, the precautions that Jude recommends, uh, I want to uh, finish, uh, finish this. Yeah? Uh, okay, that I'll catch. So, I have, I have dwelt much about the flesh, the spirit, and the soul. And I've talked about a Christian who is carnal. And I've talked about a Christian who is spiritual because he listens. She listens to what the spirit of the Lord says. And that is the concluding statement that came from none other but Jesus himself when he said to the seven churches, whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What is the Spirit saying to the churches today? It has not changed. Same. Beware. Paul was telling in, in, in Philippians chapter 3, I think it's verse 5, beware of dogs, because they, <laughs> uh, not the German shepherds. Hmm? Beware. Beware of, 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 verse 2, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. Beware. All right? So I have raised an alarm, and if Jesus comes today, 
I can say like Paul, I wash my hands. I'm clean of anybody's sin who is not listening to this alarm that is going off and saying, beware. Anybody not led of the Spirit of God is, the, Paul's put it, this one is not of God. And how many we have even up to being ministers, they call themselves shepherds and, and bishops, but not led by the Spirit of God. Beware. These are what Paul is saying, dogs. Beware of them. They are like that. Watch out for dogs. Watch out for evil workers. Watch out for those who mutilate the flesh. They just want to work around the flesh. Beware of them. And if you are part of the flesh due to ignorance, I recommend to you, in tears, in humility, go before the Lord. Let him complete the process of your salvation by sealing you with the presence or giving you the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, let me conclude this verse 20 and 22 of Jude. Let's go back there. Uh, I am concluding with the seven points, so you can imagine how long that conclusion is. <laughs> this is to the brethren filled with the Holy Spirit who have accepted Christ, whose spirit is active, who can hear from the Holy Spirit what the Spirit says to the churches according to the words of Jesus Christ uh, himself. This is what it says. But you, dear friends, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, that's point number one. You brethren, number one, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Most holy faith is that faith I've said that was in the apostles. Build yourself up in that holy faith. How do you do that? Acts 20 verse 32. Acts 20 verse 32. I want to be brief. Acts 20 verse 32. And now I commit you to God and to the message of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst those who are sanctified. Give me King James. King James. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Praise the Lord. So you build yourself up using the word of grace. That tells you you must be a scholar of the word of God. If you're not a scholar of the word of God, even Paul wrote to Timothy and told him, study, study to show yourself, study. That's why in our upbringing, and I pray that it is going on, we had groups, like when we were in school, we called them Bible study groups. Because we sat down to study the Bible, where we got that habit, and which I practice until today, because I love studying the Bible. So you must, you cannot build yourself up in the most holy faith if you are not a Bible study person. Get Bible study materials and keep reading. Seek understanding. Seek knowledge. What you don't understand, dig deep until, because the Bible says it is God's wisdom to conceal wisdom. And it is the duty of the king to seek for it. Most of the things that God has told us, they are concealed. That's why Jesus said, seek and you shall find. It is not just you do some small thing and you find. It is seeking. Seek knowledge and you shall find. So, number two, let's go back to Jude. Number two, again, back to the same point. Jude 20. 
So I've said building up yourself. That's point number one. Number two is just there. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying. How are you going to contend with your faith? You have to be a person who prays in the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, Paul repeated that same message. Let's go there. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, that needs another teaching. But I know some of you, when you hear praying in the spirit, you think it is speaking in tongues. It goes beyond that. I don't have. But at least the mention of the spirit, and it's a spirit with a capital S, means you are led in that prayer by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, verse, verse 26 we don't know even what, to pray, what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself helps us with intercessions, with groanings deep for our understanding. You must be in partnership with the Holy Spirit wherever you are praying. Now, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, then what do you pray? Praise the Lord. So you cannot defend yourself if you don't understand. And this I am just chimbuering so that you can get for yourself an assignment. Where am I going to start from in this message? You must pray in the Holy Spirit. You don't know how to, what to pray for. So you, you come here to bind demons and the Holy Spirit was not for you to bind the demons. He sees beyond the binding of the demons and he says quote the scripture, quote this word. Present this word to the enemy. You know, and you, you are busy binding, binding, binding. Yeah? And then from there you top it up by speaking. Uh, you know, tongues can be <laughs> learned. You can just practice and it, you become perfect. And you're asking, what are you praying? What are you saying? Well, that's a topic for another day. It is well explained by Paul, but I'm not going into it. But you have to pay attention, as Jesus said, Whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. You can't pray effectively unless you listen first. You know, prayer is not bringing, God, bringing to God a shopping list, as some of us do. God, I need number one. I need number two. I need number three. I command you, supply in Jesus' name. And you say you have prayed. Uh -huh. Have you ever had those prayers? We have had them many times. And I open my eyes, I don't close. And I look at this person, I'm saying, does this person know what he's saying? Who are you to command God? Uh -huh. Because you think anything called prayer is bringing a shopping list before God. No! Prayer is first listening to the Holy Spirit. And then now, the Sp Holy Spirit downloads the mind of God into you. Because Paul said, no man can understand the mind of a person except the spirit of that man. So it is the spirit of God who understands the mind of God. And therefore, when you pray, you are able to pray according to the will of God. And the Bible says, whatever we pray according to the will of God, he gives. He supplies. So check all those unanswered prayers you have. And most of us have us at least. Why? Pray in the spirit. There are times the spirit now works through you what Paul is writing in this. That he grounds with understanding. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with the groundings which cannot be uttered. Some of us have never experienced that prayer. And I pray, and I beseech, and I put it to you. May the Spirit of the Lord help you to get to that level of prayer. Hannah got to that level of prayer where only the lips were moving and they could not utter a word. There are times you are just groaning and crying and shedding tears and you are traveling like a woman going to give birth. 
and you are wondering, God, because the spirit of the Lord has transferred the mind of God, the feelings of God into your spirit. And so you find yourself travailing. And some of you I know wonder so much. Eh? You can come here and find Minister Njeru on our knees crying and praying and praying and like, Kwanya nambia mungu nini? It's too much. Eh? Unatembea, unarudu, unapata badu anaomba. Hmm? Minus these things. The Bible says you are a note of God. Well, it's a fearful thing to utter, but nevertheless, you'd rather put the scripture across. So, there are times we are led to travail. So you would find even the person you are praying for, you have no clue what that person is going through. But the spirit of the Lord has downloaded the feelings, the pain that person is going through, and you are crying on behalf of that person. Those are some of the deep experiences that you get to know when you pray always in the Holy Spirit. Number three, keep yourself in the love of God. Let's go back to Jude. We are now in Jude 21. Beloved, keep yourselves in the love of God. That's the only way you are going to escape your faith being annihilated. Keep yourself. You see, God is always love. Like the sun, it is always shining. But must you always be in the, the sun? You can always take shelter. And there are so many people who keep shelter away from the love of God. Keep exposing yourself. Let your mind be overwhelmed and over, overtaken by the emotions of feeling how God loves you. He's a loving God. So keep yourself meditating and not only meditating, as you meditate, actually the love of God gets manifest. The Bible says that the spirit of God sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts. Praise the Lord. The spirit of God sheds the love of God. As you meditate on it, actually the spirit of God takes it up and he now manifests. Keep yourself in the love of God. Let's continue. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Point number four. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keeping yourself in the mercy of the Lord. God is rich in mercy. Praise the Lord. You cannot over exhaust or can exhaust. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 4. God who is rich in mercy. You can cast that. God is rich in mercy. Keep yourself reminding that the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. That is Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23 there. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. We have a song for that. His mercies never comes to an end. They are new every morning. Did you remind God of his mercy today? Because it is by mercy and by the grace of God that we find our being in him. Keep yourselves in the mercy of God. But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, the sentence continues, he saved us. God is rich in mercy. Number five, let's go back to uh, verse 22 of Jude. And some have compassion, making a difference. Have compassion. Now, this one is referring to how we relate to those who are genuinely weak Christians. We have compassion on them and bear them in our prayers. Not those who are willingly, you know, out of the spheres of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Paul, or rather the writer of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12, he says, amongst you, some could be weak. They, they'd rather be helped to become stronger. 
And that is the work of a shepherd. Paul, uh, John was told, if you love me, you know, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. We are here. And be willing to be fed. When the pastor calls you and talks to you, be willing to listen. Some of us can, don't, you know, I don't know what spirit that one is. You don't even want to listen. If you don't listen to your pastor, and in heaven it is recorded that your pastor is Timothy Okello. And Timothy Okello talks to you, and you become deviant. Your pastor, you see where is he? Ikai. Huh? That's where the Bible says, check on such a characters. Check. This man has been appointed for the sake of your soul. Paul, I mean in the Hebrews, he says, you give them peace and joy so that when they will give an account for your soul, they will do it with joy. Not when you cause grief to your pastor. Don't cause pastor to cry because of your stubbornness. I'm telling you now, you are dealing directly with the wrath of God. So, have compassion and make a difference. So when you are being helped, your weaknesses are being attended to and you are told, this area, please do something about it. He would just politely ask you, why are you not coming to church? So that now you can start the fellowship with him. Why are you away from house fellowships? He wants to be concerned to show you love. So, that is the work of leadership. But even at your level, show compassion to the weak uh, and be patient to the weak Christians. But it differentiates. That's why it says, making a difference. Differentiate from those who are genuinely weak and those who are stubbornly weak. Differentiate. The stubbornly weak have nothing to do with them. But the genuinely weak travail in prayer on their behalf and the Lord will strengthen them. Praise the Lord. And others serve with fear. Let's go on. Uh, okay, 23. That is where we are. And others serve with the fear. Others serve with the fear, pulling them out of the fire. In Zechariah chapter 3, you hear the Lord referring to the high priest. Chapter 3 verse 2. It's a brand plugged out of fire. Don't watch your brother go to hell. Praise the Lord. Don't watch a soul. And you know it is so clear. A soul that sins that shall surely die. Go into the closet and plead. And the Lord will give you wisdom and an anointing. Mm? And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Continue. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem will rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked out of fire? Praise the Lord. Pluck brethren out of fire by sharing them the good news that their spirit man can be reactivated if they confess their sins. And the Lord will do a new thing in them and they shall qualify uh, to be friends of God and therefore share eternity with God. Number seven, let's go back to Jude and that is the last uh, statement. So I've said you pluck them out of fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Again, flesh is coming up. You are going to maintain this faith if you not only walk away from the flesh, but hate the works of the flesh. You hate them. Anything that touches the flesh, the Lord will give you the ability. Because those are the recommendations of Jude over his theme of contending for your faith. Everything that the flesh produces should be hated by those that love the Lord because the Lord himself hates the flesh. And Jesus said that, you know, die, carry your cross, 
cross is for crucifying the flesh. If you save your flesh, you will lose your life. If you lose your flesh, you will save your life. Read, read you can refer that to Matthew 16, verse 25. I don't want to go to those. Those are the seven recommendations. And if you practice those seven items, then when Jesus comes, he will find faith in you. Praise the Lord. And we are in a, a, a dispensation, even where even the coming of Jesus Christ is not even a, an issue. Eh? It's not a point of reference in the, in the lives of brethren. They're just moving on. Eh? But the early church, the faith they passed on, it is what Jesus said. Matthew 24, verse 44. So you also must be ready at all times because the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. So which type of a Christian are you? Are you a Christian who is busy quoting the scripture, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak, or the one that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can pray. I can wake up whichever time the spirit of the Lord. Uh, we used to sing in Sunday school and uh, maybe in the church. When the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will pray as yes, David prayed. When the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will pray as yes, David prayed. I will pray, I will pray. I will pray as yes, David prayed. I will pray, I will pray. I will pray as David prayed. And so that is my parting shot in these teachings. There are no way I can exhaust, but you have some sense of direction that you must check that you have that faith that was passed on from Paul. So you can never know the faith of Paul until you read everything that Paul wrote. The faith that was read, passed on by Peter, the faith that was written, passed down by all the apostles, not the faith that was passed down by David. You know, we are Christians who have not even differentiated between God in the Old Testament and God in the New Testament. Those, those, that was a dispensation that closed, a chapter that was closed. It was a shadow. And when the, the real thing came, the shadow has to go away. That is a teaching for another day. The faith that was passed on by Paul. Last week we ended up by saying, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion and it's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas and it's good enough for him. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion and it's good enough for me. Your faith must resonate back to those days and get to find out what kind of faith that the apostles passed down through studying the word of God. It's, it's not going to, to come like it drops. Mm -mm. How, many, how many letters did Paul write? How many of them have you read? How much do you understand? The spirit of the Lord will help you as you also seek to discuss with others because that's where you say keep yourself in the love of God. Keep your, build up yourself in the most holy faith. So we can stand up and we re-examine ourselves and recommit our faith back to the Lord. My Lord, I have understood something and check through me. And like David, you say, create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me because you cannot make it without the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Let's just stand up, everybody, and let us lift up our voices to the Lord. Let us talk to the Lord. Which type of salvation are you carrying? Will it take you to heaven? This faith, it will take my soul to heaven. It will take my soul to heaven. It will take my soul to heaven, and it's good enough for me. And if you are not going to heaven, why are you here? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, our destination, 
If I labor like this and eventually I miss heaven, woe unto me. But I want to be there. When the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Why do you want to miss that by listening to the flesh? Why do you want to miss that marching in? Talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when they sing a victory song. Oh, when they sing the victory song. Oh, Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when they sing the victory song. 